Hi, and welcome back to another video tutorial. We're going to be taking a look at the content examples project again that we examined in the first video. This time we're going to be looking at stations 1.2 and 1.3. I've already got the editor open, so we're just going to jump right into it. I'm going to open up our level again for blueprint communication. We're going to go on to station 1.2, actually play it here. Just take another quick look at what we're working with here. As we approach the button, the battery is driven up and activates the light. And this is supposed to showcase um, actor casting. Now the button is really almost identical to the first button on the station, except for that the target is now a battery. Um, so if we look at the, the glass here, it'll take us right to this battery. The other button was taking us to a light type. Now this is taking us to a battery type and I'll show you what I mean. When we go into the blueprint, it's essentially exactly the same, except for when we go down here to the target variable, we'll notice that the variable type, it's actually set to the BP battery blueprint. So instead of looking for a light, we're looking for a battery. And that's really just the same communication method as we used in the first station. We're using a target, um, the target variable to target a specific actor blueprint to communicate with it. But where the real magic happens is when the battery uh, is pushed up into the light, you'll see that there are some collision boxes here, and then we've got some casting that occurs. So let's take a look at the battery, open up its blueprints. Um, we'll go to the viewport, take a look at it first. We've got the battery mesh, and then we've got a small overlap component here that uh, is used to overlap with the light bulb. And then we've got an electrical value which is just uh, an arbitrary value, looks like positive value to say the what the electric current is, I suppose. Um, nothing really happening in the event graph that's new. Same thing as the light we looked at in the last video. We've got uh, an event, this one's called move up down. It's basically the exact same thing that's happening um, in term, terms of logic. Um, but in this case, we're just driving the position of the battery up and down instead of turning a light on and off. So when this battery hits the light, um, we'll see where this casting actually happens. So we select the light, go into its blueprint. Now this light is a little bit different than the light we looked at in the last video because this one has a little uh, collision box that's located below it and hooked up to that box in the event graph, they've got uh, some collision events. So when something overlaps this trigger box, this event is going to fire. And then uh, this is actually where the casting occurs. So in the event information, we see that there is the other actor listed. So that is um, potentially going to be the battery, but we don't actually know that it's the battery yet. It's just something else that's collided with the box. It could be a player, um, it could be any number of things. But if we want to know if it's specifically the batter battery or not, we're going to have to cast to the battery type. And you do that basically by dragging out and uh, you say cast and then the name of your um, blueprint or class that you're casting to. So that's how we get the cast node up. The cast node is basically just asking, is this actor of the type that we're asking? Like, is this a battery that we've collided with? If it is, we're going to um, execute off of this success pin. If not, we're, we can do the fail. In this case, there is no fail, but if we succeed and it says, yes, this is a battery that has overlapped this trigger, then we're actually going to proceed with the battery reference, um, knowing that it is a battery, extract the electrical value out that we looked at earlier, add it to a variable that they've got set up here, which is the electricity supplied variable. Um, so it's extracting the electricity out of the battery, it's adding it to um, its own variable. And then down here, we see that it checks it. If it's anything zero or above, then we're actually going to um, toggle a light, which is a function that's in this same blueprint. So it brings us right up here. And this is exactly what we saw in the first video where we were toggling the light by using a target reference. But in this case, we're actually toggling the light when we know that um, a battery reference is present. Um, and then we're also extracting information out of that. 
can be a little bit confusing, but hopefully you get the general gist of it. Um, this example is really the same as 1.3, where we just have a whole bunch of different types of batteries that derive from one battery class. If we uh, hit Control B after selecting one of these batteries, it'll take us to the content browser location where the blueprint is stored. And you'll see that there are three battery blueprints, but actually there's just one parent blueprint and two child blueprints. They have them named child here for your convenience. But if we mouse over this first one, you'll see that its parent class is of the actor type, whereas the big battery um, is parent class is of the battery type. So it's inheriting everything that this battery is and then just changing um, one variable, which is the electricity value. So we see the small value is four, the medium value is 10, and the bigger, larger battery, the brightest one is 25. So what happens when each of these batteries are pushed up to the light respectively, um, each light, we'll take another look here, when the collision happens, it takes a look at the battery, it accesses the battery's information, which is the electricity, and then it passes that variable or checks that variable to see whether we're going to turn the light on. And uh, when it does turn the light on, we're actually using the electricity value in this instance to drive the light up to the supplied electricity value, um, which will give us the variable brightness that we see with the small, medium, and large batteries. So um, hopefully you got all that. We're going to now switch over to the tutorial part where we reproduce the actor casting aspect that's happening in this example, which is also the same as the next example. They're really, um, all the action again is happening in this light. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, start off with creating our own light. Go to the content, right click, say new folder. Again, we're gonna make my stuff folder. I didn't save last time, I did save last time. All right, we'll go to the my stuff folder. Um, we will right click, create a new blueprint class. We're going to make it an actor class. We're just going to call it BP underscore cast light, just to differentiate it from our other one. We're also going to create another button class to um, work with our battery setup. So we're going to create an actor class again. We're going to name it BP underscore, let's see, button battery. There we go. So now that we have our button battery and our um, new casting light, let's just go into the light and set up the cast uh, setup that we'll need. Now here it's just telling us that we don't have any graphs or any scripting set up in our blueprint. So we're just going to say open full blueprint editor. And it provides us with uh, an event graph with a few of these uh, nodes that are only really just here for your convenience. I usually delete them. Now what we need in our new light is a light, point light again. This time we also need a collision object. We're going to choose the box. And then for our point light, uh, well, we'll just leave it like that. We'll go into the event graph. Um, with our box highlighted, you can right click and say add event for box collision event on begin overlap. And then also add one for the end overlap. Now what we're going to do here is when another object overlaps this component, we're going to get an actor. And what we want to do is we want to cast that actor to our, to our button battery. And it looks like I named it the same as one that's already on there. So we're just going to choose one of them here. I'm actually going to go back in the editor, rename my button battery class to BP my underscore button battery. And then now we can go back to the light and we'll see that that one did not update. So we're going to cast to my button battery. All right. Once we have this cast node, this is really where the magic is happening. We're saying, is the other overlapping actor um, one of my batteries? And if it is, we're going to assume that it is. And here we're just going to turn on the light. So we actually need an event for that. So we're going to say custom event. 
and uh, toggle light. And we're actually going to put an input on this one like they have. And this will be the light state. We select our light. Again, we're going to use our set intensity, if I can spell. Um, actually, this time we're going to use a branch since we're using the state. And if the branch says true, we're going to set our intensity to this, which I think we said last time was 5,000. 5,000. And if it's not, we're just going to set the intensity back to zero. And that'll cover our light turning on and off. And then what we want to do to complete this is hook up our events. So if this is true, we're going to toggle our light on the on state. And the same thing happens when the end overlap event fires. We're going to cast again and say, did my battery end overlapping? And if it did, we're going to fire off and say to set the state of the light to off. Compile and save. Go back. Jump on into my button battery blueprint. And here we're just going to add a static mesh. I cannot type today. Static mesh. Um, this is going to be button battery. So is it a button or a battery? Let's just make it into a battery. Let's go for the big battery. And then we're also going to do a collision box. Um, that's going to be fine. We are going to set this up much like the other batteries with a custom event that says move battery. Now we need a timeline to drive the battery. Doesn't really matter what it's called. I usually like to start out with a zero to one type of thing. That value is zero. This value at time one, we'll just make it a value one. And then we'll just call this move. Now from here, we just want to basically push the root component um, up a little bit. So we're going to set I really need to take some typing class. Set relative uh, location. We're going to split the struct here. On our update, we're just going to drive the relative position. Um, multiply this by however much we want to push up. We'll say um, we'll say 20 centimeters, and then we'll plug that to the Z location. So once we fire off the move battery event, we should uh, play from start and push the battery just up 20 units. And that's really all that happens. The idea behind this is that we're gonna drive the battery up so that the collision with the light and the battery both overlap. Compile and save, go back to our content browser. I'm going to take a shortcut by modifying our blueprint from the last video. Just double click on our BP underscore button that we made. If you remember, we set our target to be uh, uh, the variable type BP underscore light. We're just going to change that to um, BP underscore my button battery. Um, we say change variable type. It's going to go through everywhere in our code and look for places that we um, use that variable that are incorrect. So we're just going to delete this and kind of start over. So now that this target is set to my button, we should actually have an event that's called move battery. What we're going to do is just uh, hook the move battery on the begin overlap. So this will be kind of like a one-time shot. And then from our last video, uh, our light started on um, and it caused a little problem. So we're just going to turn it off initially as our default value, compile and save. Let's set up our little station here. We've got our modified button from the first video. We've got the battery that we just set up. We're gonna move this up just a touch. And then we've got our casting light that should go right above it. 
Now I'm going to go over here, position this so they're not touching at first, and then hopefully the collision box from the battery will move up into the light and turn it on. Let's hit play and just see what we got. Walking up to the button here, we cross over it and nothing happens. And the reason for that is if we look at actually that message that popped up, runtime error, access none, trying to read property target. We forgot to set our target. Since we changed variable types, the target and the level was changed. So now we just have to grab our dropper and say, we want to move this battery. Now let's hit play, run back over into our hitbox. Oh, and it's setting the relative location. And that actually might not be the best thing. Um, so instead of moving the scene route, we're actually going to move the static mesh. So my apologies for that. Um, what's happening here is that the root mesh doesn't have a relative uh, position. So this would have moved us to zero, zero uh, um, of, in the world space. And that's actually just not where the battery started out. So let's compile and save that. Go back, hit play, cross our fingers, approach the light, battery moves up, light turns on, yay! All right, so that was a rough recreation, admittedly, of what's happening here with the actor casting. We can no doubt go back and make some improvements to the logic and polish things up, but I just wanted to show you the nuts and bolts of uh, exactly what's happening, walking you through the steps of recreating it all so that you can get a picture of how the communication flows from one blueprint to another. Thanks a lot. See you next time.